The last thing you want is for something to go wrong with your plumbing, but it happens a lot. And the last thing you want when there's water spraying all over your kitchen or your toilet is overflowing is looking up reviews on which plumber you should call. So let me save you some time. Call the art of plumbing. They're always on time. They can locate the problem and fix it right away. They even help with solutions to stop any future problems. Save time. Call the art of plumbing today. 541-951-9405. Welcome into Other People's Shoes. I'm your host, Neil. And today was a hard episode. It really was. When I sit down with my guests, Jason and Trina, and we talk about a topic that is really hard. When you have a special needs kid, there comes a time where you have to make a decision. And when doctors are advising you to do one thing, but your faith is saying you need to do another thing, what do you do? Well, you're going to hear that amazing story next. I hope you're ready for it, because you know I am. So here we go. Hey, come take a walk with me, not like you used to do, do something different. Open up your mind and open up your eyes and change your direction, change your perspective. Welcome into Other People's Shoes. I'm your host, Neil, and today we sit down with, in my mind, arguably an amazing couple. Now, some may say, well, you know, really, are they that amazing? I think they are because they have a tremendous heart and they have a tremendous amount of mercy, love, and uh, we're going to be digging in deep uh, to a very, perhaps, uh, challenging subject, and that is our kids, right? We all want to be great parents. We all want to be that parent that that others look at and say, yeah, they kind of got it together. At least in my mind, uh, these people have done a great job in doing that. So let me introduce... Uh, we'll go with ladies first. Trina, welcome on. How are you? Good. Thank you for having us. Absolutely. And Jason, and I'm glad you're wearing your hat. I'm going to make note of that right now. Your Seahawks <laughs> Nice. Hat. Thank go you. Hawks. Go Hawks. That's right. We are Pacific Northwesterners. I don't know if that's a thing, but I just made it a thing. So, uh, so anyway, so we're going to be digging in deep uh, to this idea. Uh, well, not even this idea. Uh, I mean, that's just reality. Uh, Jason and Trina have a son. Uh, we can say his name, right? Yep. Okay, yep. his name is Joel. And Joel is, in all accounts, right, special needs kid, right? Definitely special needs. Okay. And so we're going to kind of dig into that. So uh, if you're ready, if you're a special needs parent, listen up carefully, because I think they got some wisdom here that, that you may be able to use, or maybe a girlfriend or a friend uh, may be able to use as well. If you're a special needs dad, that's why I love that Jason's on too. He's going to give the, obviously the dad perspective and then Trina, of course, the mom perspective. So here we go. We're digging in deep. We're going to jump right in here. So uh, guys, what's the story? Like when did you first find out Joel was going to be special needs and then kind of walk us through that process? Okay. So I was about 30, 32 weeks along. Um, previously I had had a miscarriage and I was what they call a older mom. They actually call them geriatric uh, moms' pregnancies when you're older. Um, I was 37. And so after the miscarriage, they had done extra ultrasounds um, when I got pregnant with Joel to be um, proactive. And it was in utero that we had found out um, that he had a lot of um, issues. And they said that they wanted me to deliver up in Portland, up at OHSU, and um, but we didn't know the depth of the issues until he was born. So what goes through your mind as a mom when you hear that? Um, definitely scary. A um, bunch of thoughts go through your mind. Um, one of them is... What could I have done differently health-wise? Um, was it something my body did? Was it um, genetics? Was it, you know, um, there was a lot of just scary emotions that you go through, especially after having a miscarriage and wondering if this child is going to make it too. Um, so there was a lot of raw feelings with that. 
uh, Jason, from his dad's standpoint, I mean, do you know? Do you know if you're having a boy or a girl at this point? Uh, we did find out that uh, we were having a boy. Um, there was abnormal, you know, on the ultrasounds. We knew going in that you know something was wrong. We didn't know what. We didn't know how what the depth was even because um, sometimes when they when they say that then it's not nearly as dire. It can be fixed. You know, it it's it's usually uh, corrected easily. So I'm 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 not uh, a father of a son, mm-hmm. but I know when Adia, our daughter, was was in the process of being born, mm-hmm. right? Um, I'm not going to say I was like devastated that we were having a girl. So let's right. be clear on that. But I mean, there was there was like when I found out, I was like, oh, cool, you know, we're having a girl. But I was like, you know, deep down, right, you know, you right, are, right, right. Okay, we'll just leave that there. You're right. Well, yeah. <laughs> right. But my my question is, is did you start thinking of playing catch, going fishing, going hunting, doing all the, you know, outdoor stuff that you like to do? Did you ever think, like, none of that's going to happen now? Yes and no. Okay. I, I mean, at that early stage, that wasn't even a, an, an idea. Okay. You know, it, it's just, once I was in that perspective, it was... Um, Joel first, you know, is like, there's a problem first. It, it, all that's secondary right? at that point. Okay, so you go, you do end up going to OHSU to have him up in Portland? Yes. Okay, so, so then pick up there. Yeah, so mind. we go up and we do the tour because um, they go through and you go through an enormous amounts of testing. Um, and even during the testing they kind of shamed me being an older mom, not getting an amniocentesis. Um, and for those that don't know an amniocentesis. I was just going to ask you because I don't know. <laughs> I'm like, what are we talking about? Right? Here, um, an amniocentesis can give you markers on whether your child is a healthy child or whether they will have long-term disabilities. And that's usually that precursor that you're talking about abortion era. That's if there's signals there or flags then they'll, you know, rec- or recommend that it's abortion type, you know, because that kid's not going to be optimal, suppose. at least it was my understanding. Yeah, so, you know, going into that, we had a lot of, um, from the beginning, it was a fight on my end to be um, proactive um, and fight against those cultural ideas um, that we have going on right now in our country. Um but we went through the tour and everything, and going through the tour, um, I ended up having an enor- enormous amount of stress, as you can imagine, and ended up starting um, labor early. And they said that you're not going to go home. You're, we're admitting you now. And so at that point, um, you could do what the doctors say, and, you know, I'm... I have a strong belief in God and um, rely on Jesus as my Savior, and I knew that he was going to carry us through. I just didn't know how much he was going to carry us through. So you kind of hit on it a little bit, Jason. Abortion was suggested? It, it's an underlying suggestion. Okay. You know, Nobody it, came nobody's out and gonna said... Nobody's going to beat your door down, but right. it's an okay. underlying, okay. hey, this kid's not going to be good. You know, you want a good kid. Um, <laughs> you know, where, where do you go from there? Yeah. You, can't, how, you, you have to have perfect kids, supposedly, right? How do you guys respond to that? Well, you know, that's not an option for me. Right. You know. Okay. Yeah. Never even thought about. No. No. Um, after Joel was born. Uh, uh, let me jump in. Yeah. So others would say, well, He's not really a, a baby yet. I'm not saying this, okay? <laughs> Just, yeah, let's be clear. Right. Right. I know that. All right. But others would say, right. right, he's not really a baby yet. He's not born. Um, think about all the health concerns he's going to have. I mean, is he, what the, what's his quality of life going to be like? Why don't you just do the right thing here mm-hmm. and just, you know, 
just, you know, end the pregnancy, just, you know, call it good, maybe, you know, adopt, because obviously maybe there's there's some challenges in being able to give birth. You know, th that's probably easier. That's an easier road to take. Right. What would you, how, what would your responses be to that? Well, you know, to, in my opinion, all life is, is God created. Um, and who am I to take that life, right? I mean, that's that's the key for me. What would your response be, Trina? You know, um, I'm, I'm the same with Jason, and I have that same belief that, you know, um, all life is sacred, and God created it, and He can give and He can take away. And He gave, but that doesn't give me the choice to take away. All right. So you have you go into basically pre labor, right? Or, Correct. Yes. Right. Okay. I, I didn't know if I had this. Yeah. Right. No, yeah. you had it right. Okay. So pre labor. So you go into pre labor, and then you end up having having Joel, right? Yes. So how early was he? He was born five weeks early, okay. and because of the stress that he was under during pregnancy and during delivery, I wasn't sure if I was even going to be able to hold him, mm -hmm. and they warned me. I may not even get to hold him. He may have to go directly to surgery. And that was that was hard. Um, but God did bless me with being able to hold him for a couple of minutes and to get to see him. And I was able to hold him and to have that bond. Where does Joel get his name from? I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> I figured we needed a little levity. That was yeah. deep, Trina. Just, yeah. That's the, that's the Naven in me. If you guys don't know what that is, yeah, uh, yeah, so, yeah. So we do. I know you guys do, but you know those listening may not. But uh, but I felt like we needed a little levity yeah. there. Yeah. So that's the Naven in me. Sorry. Yeah, I know. But but uh, you guys just picked I, it. Just there's no a family member. Or... You know. Um, I know there's a book in the Bible named Joel, but right, but outside right. of that, I I, don't I, know. I had a a guy I used to work with is named Joel. And that was probably part of it. Okay. Um, yeah, we um, we were tossing a couple of names around. Um, we were thinking either Josiah or Joel. Um, his middle name is David, which is after my cousin. Um, so that's where we got his middle name. Um, he was killed in a car crash. So we that's where the middle name came from. But um, when he came out, we were really set on Josiah. But when we came out, we just were like, no, it's Joel. It's Joel. So it's Joel David. Yeah. Okay. So Joel's born way early. Mm -hmm. You get to hold him. Yes. Yeah. And, and then he's whisked away. Where, where does he go next? Where does the journey take you guys from there? One of the, going back, yeah, one of the, please. The, the biggest things when I, I got to hold him first, one of the biggest things I will never forget is, is normal babies when you, when you hold them. I hold, held my daughter Ashley when she came. And, you know, they're all pink and they're kind of, you know, a little fussy and... You know, beautiful babies, right? Well, Joel came out and he was completely green. I mean, green, green. Yeah, I've never seen a baby green before, and I won't forget that. I mean, when you think of a sick kid, it's like wow. But thank the Lord that he he brought him through that. Yeah. Half an hour later, he's in surgery. So what's the first of, uh, first of many, I'm guessing, surgeries? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So what, uh, what, what's involved in that? So the very first surgery that he had, um, he has a condition called short bowel syndrome, which is just what it says. His um, small intestine was cut to almost 10 centimeters. Um, for those of you that don't know, your small intestine is like about 250 centimeters, and he was left with 10. Um, so that's where um, your food absorption comes in and helps you thrive. Um, so we had that surgery, and there was many multiple surgeries. Um, and with that came a long, long hospital stay. When do you guys finally get to go home with Joel? Three months later. Wow. We were in the NICU for three months. Wow. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of bad coffee. 
Yeah. Yeah. It was, sorry. It was a, <laughs> sorry. It was a, yeah. It, it felt toxic uh, there bet, for a while. I bet. Yeah. Wow. Three months? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. And during that three month period, our family was separated because Jason had to go back and support the family. And so it felt like, to me, almost a separation. Yeah. And it was very difficult to do that by myself a lot of the times because he, he had to come back down here to Medford, so right. which is five and a half hours from where we were at, for right. those that don't know. Yeah, thank you. Four I was actually going to say that. Four and a half, five, yeah. depending on how you drive. Right. right? You're like, I've done it in 3.2. <laughs> yeah, no, no, never that fast. Um, awesome. Well, what, was, what do you think is the biggest challenge to date with Joel? Because cause we, we see the other side. We get to see yeah. the other side. So it's fast forward, of course. I'll fast forward for you guys. I'm sure there's a whole lot of other details that are in there. But fast forwarding, Joel will be 12 mm-hmm. uh, by the time actually this episode airs. So right now, Joel is 12. We're, we're taping this right. before he's 12. But, but when you hear this, he's 12 now. So mm-hmm. 12 years old. He's going to go into middle school, right? He's in middle school. He's in middle school right yeah. now. He'll so be he, seventh grader He'll in be fall. a seventh grader in the fall. And he wasn't supposed to live past five. Say that again. That bears repeating. He wasn't supposed to live past five. Yeah. That's incredible. So biggest challenge. I'm, I'm sure there have been many, but, <laughs> but if you could like maybe narrow it down for us uh, as sim- uh, simply as that is, I don't know how simple that's going to be, but, but what are some of the biggest challenges that you've encountered with Joel? Yeah, so... Um, communication. Communication would be a huge one. Um, how so? He talks his own language. I, yeah. I'm, I'm sure you, you've I do. seen this. I do. Um, he... His brain isn't wired the, the same as a normal child. I mean, he, he talk, we call it Joel language, but he, he says things kind of backwards. Sometimes he has uses different words that is his own meaning. But in being, a, being his parent, we kind of understand him just because we know what words he uses. Gotcha. Yeah. And... We did find out through all of all of the years um, that he has trouble with short-term memory loss. So trying to get him to learn things with a short-term memory loss is a very big challenge. I'm just thinking multiplication tables. Uh, He's yeah, actually alphabet. learning math. That's awesome. It's, it's awesome. Yeah, I don't great. know how those teachers are doing it. <laughs> But Our teachers are godsend these days. Yes, I, they are. That's a side note. So, uh, so memory issues, language, communication, uh, kind of same thing. But um, mm-hmm. what, what are the challenges that that you guys run into? Puberty. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, some of the challenges that we do have, um, even though he is been cleared by doctors that he's not on the spectrum, he does have some tendencies towards so. Um, we've got a lot of social challenges. Um, sometimes kids don't understand, um, where Joel is at and why he acts the way he does. And, um, he has no personal bubble and, um, there is no boundaries. And Some of so, that I think has to do with being in the hospital too. Yeah. Cause everybody wants to love on him because, you know, he is, he needs it, you know, but he see, you know, if everybody's loving on you, there's no strangers. <laughs> Right? Yeah. So he, he just likes to go up and love on everybody. Yeah. And another challenge is, you know, stranger danger. Um, there is no stranger danger to him. Everybody's his friend. So that's a big challenge to keep him safe in the community. Wow. All things I never even considered in, in just interacting with Joel. And I have interacted with Joel. Mm-hmm. Uh, if I don't know my Wii and Pokemon stuff, I'm, I'm probably not going to have a very mind. productive <laughs> conversation with Joel. So uh, you guys have been married how long? It'll be 23 years in January. I think you're right. Yeah, 23 years. We're, we're looking at each other. It's been a while. It's been, yeah, it, it's... <laughs> I, if you're a mom, More and more people say, you need video when you do your show, Neil. And I'm like, uh, I don't know. But that moment, I felt like I needed on video. Oh, They're both looking did. at each other going, what? <laughs> you want to take... No, no, maybe. 
That was awesome. Yeah, 23 years, though. That's awesome. Yeah. That, that's reason to celebrate, too, because, yes. again, you talk about the separation. You talk about that. What What did Joel's arrival do to your marriage? <laughs> it definitely didn't make it easier. <laughs> I mean, how so, though? I mean... I mean, um, other than the separation thing, I mean, that, that, right. that's a given. But, but you know, couples deal with that all the time. You know, if their husband's, you know, deployed or their right. wife's deployed or, you know, maybe they have a job that they have to work out of town or, or you know, whatever. But, but how, did it, how did it put a strain on you guys? For me, it was um, the challenge of doing all of his medical stuff and draining me mentally, emotionally, um, and physically. So, as a mom, doing it a lot of it while dad still had to support the family and work, um, I you know makes a mom exhausted. It get, puts a mom in burnout to where she doesn't have what it takes to fill those needs of my husband that does help when he can, and also the siblings that are involved, and they feel left out a lot of the time. Yeah. So, Jason, how do you feel like it was a strain for you guys? Well, for me, it's it's kind of understanding when when Joel came through. It was almost like a season of mourning. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So, basically, for at least, let's say, five or six years, as Joel's growing up, we're still in that constant season of mourning, you know, because nothing is, is right, nothing is perfect. Um, but it's just kind of doing with the day to day, get trying to get through that season, and you know and that that puts a strain on anybody's marriage, no matter you know if you're you're normal or not. You know, just that morning of you know almost like a death, but it's it's not death. You just don't know when that next um, shoe's gonna fall, right? Well, two things come to mind when you're talking. <clears throat> the first thing is is again I. I don't think people would necessarily maybe judge you or blame you, Mm -hmm. per se. I mean, the road you you traveled on, I mean, going back to that abortion thing, all of this could have been avoided. You Mm -hmm. you didn't have to go through that hardship. You didn't have to put your marriage on... uh, on a strain. You didn't have to strain your other, you know, your other kids. You know, you could have just, you know, just said, okay, well, we're just going to try again. We didn't get the perfect kid. We're just going to try again. Right. Well, some people think that's an option, but me, there's, that's not an option. Just like I said before, you know, life is precious, and God controls life and death, not me. And, you know, the morning issue that he was talking about, um, in my opinion, for me, it was not being jealous of people's healthy kids Mm -hmm. not comparing them to what they can do because my child's different and um again it you know it's that choice you know a lot of people would tell you you know well you made your choice you know you need to suffer through what you chose and um to that i say yeah i did chose that because god gave that to me again God is the creator of all things. And I do not have that choice to um, give or take away. You mentioned uh, you mentioned your other kids. How have they responded to Joel in this situation? Because I'm thinking, you know, I'm the youngest of four, right? And all of us were relatively normal. Right. You know, we, I, I don't think any of us really, per se, would be special needs kids or anything like that. But... Um, there was a pecking order for sure, right? I mean, I'm right. sure you guys know this too because you have siblings, but the oldest seem to get everything, right? Yeah. The, the middle kid seems to get left out. And then there's the youngest who, of course, gets everything yeah, as right. well, right? Because they're the baby, you know, which mm-hmm. that was me. So I got everything. But um, how did the other kids respond to Joel? Because and, 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 obviously you had to devote. You can, it's not like you can just be like, okay, Joel, figure it out. You know, right. you know, you, there, had, there was a lot of hands-on. There was mm-hmm. a lot of, you know, obviously doctor visits mm-hmm. and, and, and surgeries. Attention. And, and attention, absolutely. Right. Yeah. So how did the other kids respond? Um, well, 
our child sequence, our kids are spread out. So um, Joel's siblings, his two sisters, are adults. So they're 10 and 12 years apart. Um, I don't advise that, by the way. But um, I'm talking about the name in here. <laughs> but, um, you know, the oldest one, um, she um, doesn't ha- she is out um, in Texas. And so she, she knows him and she loves him. Um, she actually um, put herself through nursing school and um, through this. And that's what got her on her path to her career. Um, was through Joel? Was through Joel. Wow. Yeah. That's um, incredible. She, she was living with uh, Trina's mom and dad at the time. So that was, she really didn't have a hands-on um, involvement. With, involvement with Joel. Uh, but our middle daughter, Ashley, did. So mm-hmm. it, it affected her more, I think, than it did Katie, yeah. their oldest. Yeah. Um, our middle daughter, Ashley, um she felt the brunt of it. Um, a lot of times she felt that she was abandoned. Um, it's We were there, but we were also absent, if that makes any sense. Uh, yeah, I mean, if, I'm not putting words in your mouth, I hope. Um, but the idea that you were there physically, maybe just not emotionally there for her. Correct. Right. Okay. Yeah. So or she, as much as, or as much. you know, she right. was she was the baby, you know, right for quite a while until Joel came along. Somebody and then her like, yeah from that baby seat, yeah, right. So we it was deal well with her. that. Her. Yeah, right. I'm just speaking from experience, I don't know. My parents didn't luckily do that to me. That would have been devastating. Um, so, how does perseverance play into your guys' story? Huh. Yeah, that's a big part of the story. You know, you do have to persevere through all that, those trials. And you have to have that, you know, the joy that comes through it, you know, to getting to that other side. You can't just, you know, oh, I'm going to, I'm going to push through this with a bad attitude because you'll, I mean, I would never, you know, make it. But I have to enjoy that process, even though it might suck. Yeah. (laughs) Well put, Jason. <laughs> you know, um, as a mom, um, and I want to speak to any mom out there that yeah, please. Um, has a child with special needs or some type of health condition, you might be single. I was there too um, before I married Jason, a single mom. So I get both sides of that and um, try to find a group of connected people, a support group. You have to take care of you to be able to take care of your family, to be able to take care of the other kids, to be able to um, even take care of your special needs child, take care of you. Um, And just that perseverance, we're we're mama bears when it comes to our kids. And that's what, you know, with the help from God and my trust in him and, and sealing his healing hand on my son a lot of times. Uh, where he wouldn't have made it, um, just keep strong. Yeah, that's no lie. Because you know that's one of, part of my job too was to to calm her down when she when I mean she would get pretty a- animated towards you know when her her son is in that. No. You know, yeah. We talking yeah, about the same person? Yes. <laughs> So I would have to be that 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 go between. So you say, have a zebra shirt, is what I'm hearing. Pretty the much, the referee, in yes, you, right, comes yes. out. Yes, okay. yes. I had to kind of okay. calm her down. Right. You say, "Hey, honey, we've got to get through this," and you know, we can do this. Yes, we can, we do, can this. do this. Right, we can make it. Uh, but you know, she she had to she did the same thing for me. You know, and when you know all things looked bleak, you know, hey, we can get through this. God, God's got us. You know, what do you want for Joel long term? Have you thought that far? <laughs> Just to be able to do things on his own. This me. You know, as we get older... Wait, can, oh, hold on, ahead, sorry. Yeah. I, I want to jump into that a little deeper. What, yeah. what, what do you mean? Like, Just be a, just, norm, just normal, you know, things that are normal. Be able to grow up and, you know, you know do his own things, you know, support himself. Um, that's... You know, that's anything I could ask for. 
Okay. Is I mean, does he struggle with just normal everyday stuff? Like uh, I'm thinking of like normal stuff, like tying your shoe, brushing your teeth. There for a shower, while, he did. Um, you know, making food for yourself. Like I made breakfast for he him this morning. He doesn't make food for himself. He doesn't eat mostly, or yet. But uh, I mean, slowly but surely, he has been. But I mean, right now, I wouldn't say that he's self sufficient on eating. That's one area he hasn't been. Um, you know, and that's just, you know, he's still a middle schooler. So, you know, you think about driving yourself somewhere or taking care of yourself, you know, when you're alone. Um, that's something to look forward to. All right. Trina, what were you going to say? I, I oh, jumped no, in on you. You're Sorry. fine. That's okay. Um, so for those wondering why... Um, Joel's not self-sufficient. Um, a lot of times, even though his birth age is 12, mentally and cognitively, um, he is about a first or second grader. So he thinks on a slower, smaller scale. Um, so for him to, uh, for the future and long term, as we do get older, um, I look at who's going to care for him if he doesn't get some of these life skills. So we are working very hard at trying to help him take his own bath by himself, um, teach him out, take out the trash, just those basic normal things. Does Joel know that he's different? It, I mean, we're all different. Right. Let me be clear on that. Right. I mean, no. We're all different on some level. You're, 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 you're talking about... Um, does he recognize recognize that, that he doesn't have certain skills that other people do? Yes, is what yeah, you're I was about. trying to figure out how to phrase that. Phrase you it. said it way better. Okay, um, you really did. Great job, Jason. Thank you. Uh, I should be the more eloquent one, but I'll I'll tip my hat to you on that one. So yeah. yeah. Um, yes and no. I okay. mean, he and and it's you know thank the Lord that he has been you know progressing the way he has. Um, there's little things that I see that he's like, you know, he, he, he has aha moments where he, he realizes, hey, I'm, these kids do things that I don't. And there's just little bits here and there. But usually when he, when he has those aha moments, that's when it, the, oh, well, you know what? I need to figure out how to do that, which is good. How has his peers treated him? I mean, he's going to a public school. To oh, me, man. that would be a nightmare as a parent, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't know, but I'm just thinking kids are mean. They are. They are way meaner than when, well, I'm, you're way older than me, Jason. Let's be clear. Trina, you're older. maybe my age. I don't know. No, I'm just kidding. I don't know. But That's I'm, why he's my favorite. Right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> but my point is, is I just remember when, you know, when I was in elementary school, mm -hmm. which was a way long time ago, uh, kid, we were mean. I'm not going to say, I'm not leaving myself out of that. I was really mean to kids. Right. Like, we made kids cry. Yeah. I, I, we I've been made there too. them cry. We didn't have social media, you know, to blast them on or anything like that. But but how are, how are his peers responding to him? You know... He, we had back up just a little bit. We had homeschooled yeah. him for a few years because of his health conditions. He was in school for the first time in fifth grade. And then the very next year in the middle school, seven classes, changing classes, talking about anxiety attack for mama. Um, so I hear what you're saying on that. I feel um, like you guys just threw him in the deep end of the pool. It well, was like, I, figure it out. Well, I mean, <laughs> it felt like it, honestly. Okay. You, you know, it might seem that way. And, and I'm not but, judging when I say no, that. No, no. Just it, to be clear. And like, that's okay. Like, wow, you're being really mean to them now, Neil. You need to stop it. No, no, don't stop it. That's okay. Because, you know, how do we get big growth in our lives without being uncomfortable? 
And you know what? The the school that he's district that he is in, I, I was paranoid. I actually had an IEP meeting talking about holding him back and they're like, No, I don't think he he can do this, you know. And we had Anna on in our first season, mm-hmm. but but break down IEP just to oh, remind okay. folks. They, so, they may not be familiar with that term. I am, but but others may not. Right. So, break so down that term. an IEP, um, if your child has any um, behavioral challenges, any learning disabilities or anything like that. They are guidelines and things that need to be put into place to help your child to succeed in school. It may be um, learning at a different level. It may be different curriculum, but it still allows them to be in um, some general ed classes if the team sees fit. So it's usually a team of um, staff and parents. So he goes fifth grade, Mm -hmm. uh, non-homeschooled public school then jumps right into the fire yeah. in the middle school where he is you know going from class to class to class every day uh-huh. seven different teachers yep and, and he, he and he's thriving he, he is, is thriving. excelling um he is thriving um a lot has to do with the teacher that he has um be an advocate for your child um mm. especially Great if point. he does have to don't be afraid to speak up. You don't have to be. Um, if you don't go in gruff, you know, go in soft spoken, but yet assertive. Teachers usually listen, and um, we've done really, really well this year. His teacher has nothing great to say. Um, Everything he's great to say. You mean? Pardon? Everything great to say. Yes. I mean, yes. She. She's been really surprised in what she she's basically been able to bring out of him and he's going to seventh uh white mountain Mountain. he's going to white mountain okay and the kids are great they're um they've got a great group of kids a lot of the general ed kids i know you were talking about how some kids can be mean Uh, Um, all kids really yeah, yeah have that chance too and they um when i go in to volunteer they will come up and give them high fives, give them hugs. Um, it's just, it's awesome to see. So we've been very fortunate. Could you ever see Joel in a relationship, like a marriage relationship like you guys have? Mm. You know, it may be. I don't know. <laughs> okay. But but just, that's not on my radar. I don't know about yours, dear. Yeah, I know. Um I would hope someday that God would bring somebody into his life that would just be as patient as they possibly, most patient person in the world, um, and loving. But, you know, I think like Jason said not too long ago, not that we don't have hopes for the future, but we also want him just to be self-sufficient and he'll shine in his own time. So what, uh, what what kind of things would you give? I know you've kind of along the way been giving some advice, but what, what are some key things that you feel like if somebody saw you guys out? I don't know about you guys. I hate Costco. I'm probably going to get in trouble because I really don't like Costco. I'm sorry. I don't go to Costco. Okay. But but if you're out in public, right? If you're out in a, in a grocery store or you're out in, you know, at a baseball game or, you know, right. a Seahawks game or, yeah. you know, whatever. You're out in, you're out in public. How, how do you want people to view you as a parent? What, what kind of things come to mind on that? Well, I mean, just understand we're different, you know. Um, if somebody, I think, were to, were to uh, uh, view us, they would notice that, you know, yeah, your kid's different, <laughs> you know. I mean, and different's okay, you know. I mean, any, like uh, some of the other kids that Joel gets to be around. I, I understand that they're, okay, they're different than Joel. And they need their, their parents. They need, to, you know, to socialize in some way or to be accepted. Um, but, uh, just, just to remember that he's different. Okay. Trina, how about you? You know, um, I used to be one of those parents. <laughs> yeah. You know, you see, um, a mom struggling with a child having a meltdown at the store and I don't know about you, but I've seen them and I just look at them. I going. was that child that was having <laughs> yeah. a meltdown okay. at the store. So yeah, no, I can, I can relate. And you're like, well, why don't they just discipline their kids? 
you know, take a step back. It may not just be that it needs to be discipline. Um, maybe think that there might be something else going on that you're not aware of. Wow. Uh, I, I just think what, a lot of what you guys have shared is just awesome, powerful, cool. Uh, so let's fast forward, if you will, and see. Joel's, like we said, uh, going to be 12. Uh, so let's fast forward 20 years. Whew. I know. How old are you, Jason? In 20 years? <laughs> well, uh, I'm going to be 47 this year. Uh, I'd be 67. So maybe you're retired. I mean, I don't uh, know. Maybe. Yeah. maybe, maybe? Don't More know. than likely. Okay. All right. Hopefully. Oh, I forgot. So that question that you asked, is there anything not able to ask? That oh, be that, right? that, that, was, that was the one. Huh? No. Okay. Um, I will actually be 50 next month. So. Okay. All right. So uh, 20 years from now. Where do you guys see yourself, and then, and then, likely, where do you see Joel? I, I don't know. Um, I know. I'm. <clears throat> hopefully, I will be retired. Yeah. Um, that will probably give <clears throat> me more time with him to be able, if he's to a point where he can do things on his own. Um, that might be a, um, a benefit because you probably will need a lot of attention, you know, trying to get these, you know, social skills and everything else down. Um, I really haven't thought that far ahead. Usually, you know, in my mindset, it's, it's maybe if I ever think out, if I think ahead at all, it's maybe a year or two in the future. I'm never thinking that far far ahead, especially right. with Joel. You, right. you can't plan that far. Right. Makes sense. But uh, that that would be my hope is, you know, helping him, you know. Maybe as an apartment. Maybe as, as an own. apartment, you know, go visit him. Hey, how are you doing? You know, just kind of making sure that, you know, he's doing things for himself and doing well playing nintendo's latest game oh console yeah he probably point. have all of them <laughs> he's a big nintendo guy but trina what do you see in in 20 years looking back oh, so, uh, or looking forward not looking back but oh, looking i'd forward. rather look back um, <laughs> it's always fun to look back i'd actually you know i i will definitely be retired by then since i'll be almost you know seven zero <laughs> so um but yeah i think just having joel as self-sufficient as he possibly can you know I don't know what that will look like as he becomes a young man um, sooner than later um, whether that is you know assisted living for him um, or getting an apartment on his own with guided help or you know but just getting him as self-sufficient as he possibly can you know um, I'm not pushing for the college route I'm not pushing for I'm looking for him to um, just learn life skills and just to be a person who loves God with all his heart and wants to do what he what God wants him to do and to treat others as he would be treated will you uh, will you let him hear this and, yeah, shit, and I'm sure he knows most of this, but would you let him hear these thoughts? You mean later have? on in life when yeah. you can understand it? Yeah. yeah, sure. Definitely. Hopefully iTunes is, is still around there. <laughs> 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 awesome. Well, guys, I as we start getting ready to get ready to wrap up, I just again, I just want to thank you guys because you're honest, you're real. Um, you know, uh, I know this has not at all been maybe what you thought when you found out you were pregnant. I mean, I'm sure you you, you had visions and, and ideas and, and a concept of, well, this is how it's going to go, right? We've done this before. We know how this kind of story ends. Usually, right? Right? Yeah. It usually goes a certain way. But I think it's also a tremendous testimony to you guys to say, you know what? It's going to be hard. And I'm sure even saying that uh, conceptually, you're like, yeah, it's going to be hard. But then you're like... No, it's really gonna be hard. Yeah. Well, it it just it shows what kind of commitment. I mean, when you when you uh, go through and say, you know, I'm gonna do this set of events, 
and you don't realize what it takes to get through that set of events. And then you say, okay, well, how committed am I to get through this? That's, you know, that's what it takes. I mean, that's what I, the way I feel about it. How do you feel about that, Trina? <sighs> you know, it's one of those things, like you said, you know, you know it's going to be hard, and then sometimes you don't know how hard, and then, you know, you know, again, people might say, well, you chose this for your life by going against medical, not medical advice, but suggestions. Medical and, and uh, yeah, I like Suggested advice. medical Sug advice. Su suggested yeah. medical advice. I yeah. was trying to think how to phrase that. Yeah, yeah. I was trying to think so too. Uh, but, you know, when you're in it, you're like, oh, I didn't realize how hard this was going to be. But there's something inside that kicks in, and you just do what you have to do. It's just like anybody that is in a catastrophic type of situation, you do what you have to do to help people to survive, and that's what we're doing as parents. That's what I'm doing as a mom. So last question, then we're going to play a game, because games are fun. Everyone hey. likes games. I didn't tell you about okay. the game, but the game's fun. If you've listened to the show, you know about the game, but yeah. anyway. So... Um, Jump in the time machine with me, if you will. DeLorean. Well, we'll oh, go DeLorean. There. DeLorean, right? Oh, We're going nice. old school, right? So go back 13 years ago. What would you tell yourself 13 years ago? Because now everything you know, hindsight, of course, is, is easy. It's but 2020, what, right? Right, absolutely. Mm -hmm. But what would you tell 13-year-old or 13 years ago, Trina? And, and same question, Jason. What would you tell 13-year-old 13, 13 years ago? I keep saying that you're 13. You're not 13 when this happened. But. I'm definitely not 13. <laughs> you're not. You kind of run like you're 13. You, you're spry. I no, no. can be spry. Yeah, you're very spry. When this my guy's aches a good and soccer don't player. Come. Don't let him kid you. But what no, would you no. go back in time and tell that that uh, 13 years ago old self? That's what I was trying to say. It was very complicated, but we got there. You know, um... I think for me, I would tell my 13 years ago self that God's got this. Trust in Him. Um, we had a family verse, and I can't remember the address for the life of me, So, but it's, uh, be anxious for nothing, but with prayer and Flipping supplication, four, six. Yeah. make your request known mm -hmm. to God. And that's what I would tell myself is do not worry and be anxious for nothing. But don't forget the thankfulness part. And to be thankful for what we've got. Yeah. So Good. that's what you tell yourself. Yeah. Okay. Jason? Uh, that the, that the uh, you know, it's not as bleak as it sounds. Um, you can't get through this. Would your old self... 13 years ago, believe you, believe your present self? I don't know. Okay. I think that's, that's worth mentioning. No. Because that, at least in my mind, puts me in your shoes, puts me in your place. I hope, where you, where I you hope, were 13 years ago. I hope so, because, right. you know, it's, it's definitely, uh, if I hadn't lived it, you know, I wouldn't have known, you know. I wouldn't have believed me. Right. Yeah, for me, it would be a no. Um, Yourself would not have believed your present self? Yeah. Okay. Because of the fact of what, I, personally, I had to go through being that mom, carrying that child, fighting the doctors, telling them no. I never, in a million years, thought I would stand up to a panel of educated doctors telling them that's not an option for me. What else do you have? I would have not believed that I could have done that. Do you think that's ever an option for anybody? Now we're getting a little political, but <laughs> sorry, <laughs> that's okay. No, I'm. I open the door. I I believe it shouldn't be. Okay, but you know I can't tell them to make that that choice. Sure. Um, I would hope they wouldn't because. Um, even even a child that has challenges is worth it. Um, he's a blessing, just like any other child. Yeah. 
So, a uh, little levity, then we'll play a game. I forgot to ask you guys at this at the onset. So, Gary, uh, we're at uh, four forty-seven forty. 4740. I need this in the front. Guys, uh, what size shoe do you wear, Trina? I wear a children's size two. Are you kidding me? <laughs> no, I'm not. <laughs> she is not kidding. A children's size two. Yes. Okay. Um, that's going to be tough. Jason, what size shoe do you wear? I wear an eight or seven and a half eight. Okay. Do like you that. guys have a preferred brand of shoes that you wear? Or are you guys brand snobs uh, or just whatever's comfy? Uh, um, whatever, probably. You can find whatever a Whatever fits, Neil. Whatever <laughs> fits. Yeah, whatever I can find that will fit her foot. Gotcha. That's, that's like Cinderella, I feel like. Seriously. A little bit. It's bad. Okay. Anyways. Do you uh, have a brand that you wear that you like? I lately have been liking uh, Skechers. Okay. They've been... Uh, Okay. Good shoe. The the reason why I ask is Trina, it's gonna be impossible. I don't know how this is gonna happen. But we're supposed to be in your shoes. We're supposed to be in your shoes. <laughs> so the idea is you know we're in other people's shoes. Right. So we're in we're in your shoes. So anyway, there we are. So that could be the challenge. That could be that's definitely a challenge for me because I, <laughs> I don't even think I could get my hand in there. I'm just I assume put that out there. So okay, so we got that out of the way. <clears throat> So now let's play a game. Uh, this is a game I like to call Senseless. Uh, it's a game I came up with, made up on my own. And um, you get to roll the die in there, in the cup. Um, and it's probably going to be really loud, so I'm going to brace my audience now. We are in my room, or living room, and it's not soundproofed yet. Uh, so that's going to be our next step. Uh, but you guys, whoever wants to go first, if you want to go first, there's the die in the cup, so you get to roll it. There you go. You got a number four, so you get to answer first, and then Jason, uh, you get to roll. So brace yourself. So Trina, uh, what is one thing you'd love to hear? One thing you love to hear. This is not your question, Jason. You get you get to roll. In. That's a very broad question. I know. Can but... you give me like an example? Of no, some kind? I'm not. This is on your own. Wow. This, I can't. I'm not gonna. Okay, Jason's going now. Jason, I don't see what you got because the paper's blocking. Ooh, you got number six. That's oh, my favorite no. question. That is my favorite question on this game. So one thing I I love to hear is um, music. Okay. Do you have a certain style, band, group, um, artist? I don't know. Kind of. Kind of. A little bit of everything. Um, Do you have a favorite song? I know that's probably hard because there's no, so many good ones. No, I mean, I've got our wedding song, but that's, yeah. What's um, that one? One of them is, that we dance to, is by Wet, Love is All Around. I am not familiar with that song. That's an 80s song. Yeah, it's Wet, Wet, Wet. Wet, Wet, Wet is what it's called, um, the group. But um, I've never even heard of them. I'm I'm being it's, straight. Yeah, they they weren't. <laughs> What's the name of the song again? Popular. I'm gonna have to go look this up now. Love is all around. Love is all around. I think so. Yeah. Okay, yeah. wet, 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 yeah. rewet. I wet, think wet, so. Wet, wet. Okay, yep. I'll Google it. I'll Google that. <laughs> we'll find it. But you love that. You love to hear that. Yeah. Okay. That's I was nice. thinking like, "Mommy, I love you," or something like that. Oh. But, but you know. That. I mean, whatever. Oh, that's I mean, why it, I asked. Let's uh, yeah, see. I mean, um, I again, I don't. It's, it's, it's your interpretation. It's your perspective. So. Yeah, what I love to hear is, "Mommy, are you f- feeling okay?" <laughs> that's that's one he'll do. That's a good one. Yeah. "Mommy, can I have my iPad?" is probably a phrase you never want to hear, right? Yeah. Right. Okay, just wondering. Yeah. yeah. All right. Either that or that I can you know have my iPad all day long. Uh, <laughs> "Mommy, mommy, can I have my iPad?" "Mommy, can I play the Wii?" Yeah. Oh yeah. no, his latest is um, if he had a million dollars, he would buy GameStop. Fair. Actually, yeah. buy GameStop. I mean, I could. <laughs> On, I mean, we were talking future Joel. I could see him running a video game right? store somehow. Well, I, I mean, I don't know it. what the future holds, That's but crazy. technology way it is. We are actually borrowing a Nintendo Switch, and wow. I'm very scared to tell him about that. Don't. I'm not going to. So don't don't play this part for him. <laughs> Everything no. else you can play for him, this part, no. Uh, Jason, you got number six? Yep. So here we go. Uh, dinner with one person dead or alive. Wow. That's why it's my favorite question. Dead or alive. And you can tell me where you're eating to and all that fun stuff if you want. But but mainly it's the dinner. And it's only one. I've had people say, well, can I have? No. No, just My one. show, I say one. <laughs> one. Wow. Wow. I'd, I'd have to go to the, the Last Supper. 
that would be just that's the only meal. So that, you and you and Jesus. Well, why not? I mean, you'd have to be. I, it, it's with your a, person. I I'd mean, have to be I'm with the twelve, you, right? Yeah, I'm not judging your answer. So that would be the only real. But it's you and him. Want, it yeah, can't be the other. 12. Oh well, they'd have to be there because it's the no, Last Supper. Mm-hmm. No, you're trying to look for a loophole. No, hey, it is a loophole because it is the Last Supper. <laughs> <laughs> so, if you got one question asked Jesus, what would you ask him at dinner? No, I'm expanding on your question. You're expanding on it. Because you can um, handle it. No, I you can, can. I can handle it. Um, I, you know, it, it'd have to be what he wants out of me, you know, kind of thing. Not, you know, because all the other questions about, you know, when will I die? Or it, That's all just, it's... One, for me, it would be morbid. Two, it, it's useless because um, I know it's going to happen. Uh, but, yeah, what does he want me to do through life? That would be that would be a question. Okay. Well, guys, thank you. You're thank welcome. you so much. I just want to remind everybody, when we walk in other people's shoes, we really do get a different perspective on life. I want to thank my guest, Jason and Trina and they're amazing people and we got to hear their their story their journey uh, on being parents and what it's like to be parents of a wonderful man that he's going to be a man one day yes he is his name is Joel and uh, guys he's awesome so guys again thank you this is Other People's Shoes we just invite you to continue to listen and share this with your friends because I think it's beneficial and helpful so uh, that's it for me guys we'll uh, stay tuned for a future episode thank you again Thank you so much for joining us on Other People's Shoes. Of course, you know I'm your host, Neil Matthews. Thank you for joining us on today's episode. I don't know about you, but there is something incredibly humbling when you hear Jason and Trina talk about their son, Joel, and what he has gone through. It was very powerful on so many levels. Um, The doctors, the the procedures, the, the expectations, everything. I gotta tell you, Joel is one of the coolest kids I've ever met. By the way, just a word of caution, don't ever play him in anything that has to do with anything with the Wii. He will destroy you. I can take this from personal experience. He will destroy you. By the way, here's my daughter, Adia, to tell you about our November promotion. Adia? Thanks, Dad. Come be a part of the Other People's Shoes November giveaway, presented by Southern Oregon Runners Club. A family or friend four-pack with eight, with race entry and shirts for the Turkey Trot Run on Thanksgiving Day, Thursday, November 28th. To enter, comment on the picture of my dad and host, Neil Matthews, in a turkey suit. That can be done at Facebook.com under Other People's Shoes. For a second entry, follow us on Instagram and comment on the picture, Neil in a turkey suit photo, with hashtag Turkey Trot 19. For a third entry into this giveaway, follow us on Twitter and be sure to comment on the picture of Neil in a turkey suit with hashtag turkeytrot19. Join us next Wednesday for Special Kids Part 2. Remember, when you walk in other people's shoes, you really do get a different perspective in life. Join us Wednesday. Until then, have a great week.